Hey guys, boy Chill here. Welcome back to Reflective Serialization. In the last video, I showed you that this is nasty and bug prone and we don't like it. So what, what is the alternative that Chili proposes? Use like a good serialization library that is going to make your life easier. And so I want to introduce you to Serial. Uh, I mean, the naming is on point and the two main things that basically make this like essential in my opinion is one, when you use something like Serial, the way it works, you define one function that handles both the serialization and the deserialization so that you don't have to worry about keeping this and this in sync. It's automatically synced when you, when you write one. The other one is automatically written because it's the same goddamn function. The other thing that I love about Serial, pretty much every type in the standard library comes out of the box with serial. So you don't have to manually write logic for serializing a std string or a vector or a variant or anything like that. It's just, you just say, hey, serialize this for me and it knows how to do it automatically. So those two things mean your life is gonna become a lot easier. And it's, I don't know if I mentioned it already, but it's supposed to be pretty damn fast and it doesn't waste a lot of bytes. So it's not gonna be wasting a lot of, you know, bandwidth transferring the data, it serializes things in efficient manner. So it's good. It's great. Let's use it. Well, the first thing we got to do is we got to include serial into our project. It's a single header library, so it's very easy to just drag in. But we can also include it via VC package, which is what I'm going to do. So that's pulled in. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to simplify things a little bit. We're going to clean up. So we were sending a header with the command type and then we were sending the bytes and the payload afterwards. But if you look at like what we're doing uh, on the client side is we have it all dynamically packaged up as a command, as a variant. Uh, now, Serial knows how to serialize and deserialize a variant directly. So instead of manually sending the type and then doing that, why don't I just send the variant, the serialized variant in the package the packet directly. That'll be a lot simpler and uh, a lot less error prone. So in that case, we don't need command type anymore. We're not even going to put header in there. The only thing that we're going to put before every stream of data is just how many bytes. We're going to have just one uint32 that we actually manually deserialize. That's the only thing we'll manually deserialize or serialize. And everything after that will be handled by serial. So we don't need a header. We don't need a template anymore, just a single virtual function that takes in our variant. Now clearly on the implementation side, we got some work to do. First thing first, include serial. Now the way serial works is like it out of the box, it knows how to serialize all the standard data types, uh, std string, std vector, and all the obviously all the basic types like ints and bools and enumerations. But for, you know, just an arbitrary struct that you create, you have to define a single function that will be used for serialization and deserialization. Uh, and generally you template it so that it can work with different kinds of archives. So it can work with an input, output archives, you can work with binary, XML and everything. And you can put it as a member of the struct or you can put it as a free function. And if you do it as a free function, it's got to either be in the same namespace as the struct or in the serial namespace. So we're going to do this as free template functions in the serial namespace. Now our structs, they contain strings and we're going to use variant to, you know, have all the different types of commands that we can send. So we need to include serial types for string and variant. And then we go namespace serial and we're going to put our serialization functions in here. So we template on archive, we do void, serialize. So it takes in the archive, which is a serial data type that is used for serializing or deserializing data. And it takes in the type that is going to be serialized. So let's start with the move command S. And so how do you serialize any piece of data? Well, archive, every archive must have an operator defined for it. And you can just pass in the data, the members that you want to serialize into that. So we want to serialize structure.start and s.end. And there you go. You're done. You've defined how to serialize and deserialize, you know, this structure. 
And then we do the same for our title command, and we just do call archive with title and schmidle, and you're done. So that's basically how you do it. You Now we've taught serial how to do serialize the different types of data that we want to serialize. So now it knows how to do it, but we actually have to make it do it. So there's the second part of the equation. So let's start with the server, because that's where we're going to send our stuff. And we got our send command here. So when you want to serialize something, you create an archive. And an archive has to work with a stream. So you need a byte stream. And the most uh, convenient one for us right now is going to be std o string stream. But I don't know if we included string stream yet. So let's include that like so. And then we go back here. So we create our string stream. Then we create a binary output archive. One of the beautiful things about serial is that you can choose and easily switch between I want to serialize this binary versus I want to serialize it as, you know, an XML. I think they have JSON as well. I'm not sure. But anyways, binary is going to be the most efficient one. So we will choose that. And you create your archive. You pass it the stream that it is going to work with. Seems angry, and the reason for that, I believe, is that we have to include the archive type. So serial archives binary. So we include binary archive types. And now all we got to do is call archive, just like we did in the definitions up there. We call archive with the thing that we want to serialize, which is our command. Now this should be a variant. It is a variant, so serial already knows how to serialize a variant, so it'll do that for us. And in the process of serializing that variant, it'll have alternatives, and it knows how to serialize the alternatives. It knows how to serialize move command or title command. So it'll be all good. Once that is serialized, the archive, the bytes for that will be in the O string stream. So now we just have to send those bytes. And remember what I said. We, put, we have to put the number of bytes in the beginning of the payload. That'll be a uint32. So we need to get the buffer out of the OSS. So we call OSS.string. And then the size is just 32 bit of buff dot size. And there we go. Now we got to send the size. And then we send the actual bytes themselves. And there you go. Here's our send command. And uh, we will never need to add more code into here. Anytime we, you know, if we add a new command or if we change the contents of the commands, this never changes. And if you're looking at this and you're saying, oh, this seems a little uh, inefficient, you know, we got to send two packets and there's some copying of buffers here uh, yeah that's true i'm just making it simple for this example here but in a future video i'm going to show you how to make this more efficient so if you're interested in that you can stay tuned but anyways that is the serialization now for the deserialization so the intellisense is unhappy about this makes sense let's get rid of that trash we're not going to need it uh, now in the client I'm going to add a few things here. We used string stream for sending, and that works fine. We can use another thing for receiving. Let's, let's use something else. ACO has a stream buff object, which is a resizable buffer you can use for sending and receiving. So we'll call this one our read buff. And so you know that serials archives require a stream. So we're not using string stream here. But what we can do is we can do std iStream, basic stream interface, and that'll be our read stream. And we can wrap that read stream around the ACO stream buff. So ACO stream buff is compatible with a std iStream. And then let's put our archive in here so we don't have to recreate it every time. Not that I think that recreating it is an overhead or anything, but whatever. Now the question is, can I initialize these like this? So a stream actually needs a pointer to a, a buffer. So we'll take the address of read buff, put that in here. Seems happy with that. And then this one can take in the read stream. And it seems happy with that. OK. So now we've set up our archive, which is fed in from this stream, which is wrapped around this ACO buffer. So the first thing that we're going to do is uint 32t payload size. So we got to read in the payload size. So first we do an async read into our read buffer, which is going to read, you know, a bunch of bytes from a packet. Then we need it to read at least, you know, four bytes. 
You might actually read more than that, but that's a that's another story. Those details are another story. It's more efficient. Just trust me. But it'll at least have four bytes in there. So now what we can do is we can do read stream. We can use the stream interface, the same one that the input archive is using, and we can read. We can read four bytes into this variable here from the stream. And now we know how many bytes are in the payload. So we say, OK, now transfer that many bytes into our buffer. Then we're going to put a default constructed command into our vector of read commands. And then we're going to use our archive on that command we just created. And because the archive is tied to the stream and the stream has all the bytes in it, it's going to deserialize all those bytes right into this command. And then Bob's your uncle. You're done. We are done deserializing. And just like the other one, this never has to change. If we add more commands or change commands, this always stays the same. Now we did change the interface a little bit. It used to take a template, and now it takes in a command. But I think it'll still work, because in both cases it was just passing in a command, and command can convert to a std variant command, like a move command or whatever. Well, it's not, it doesn't like something, so we gotta, we got to find some. So we got one error, which produced a whole bunch of gobbledygook. It's a template, but look, here's where I highlighted. So look here. Hmm. Yeah, it was just IntelliSense completed to the wrong thing. So if I do buffer buff, that should work. All right, here's something. Static assert failed. Serial could not find any input serialization functions for the provided type. Now, we don't quite have enough information here in the summary. We go to the output. We go back here. Blah, 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 blah. And what is it saying? If we click here. Mm, so here's where the problem happened. And this is the rare case where this is actually not the line that's going to give you the biggest clue. You actually have to scroll down. And if we scroll down all the way, we see VEC2F. So it is having trouble serializing VEC2F. Well, that makes sense because VEC2F is a type that we define and we did not teach it how to serialize VEC2F. So this is how you do it. Serial, it's got an X, it's got a Y. And you do your you do your nasty work. All right, moment of truth. First command didn't work. Second command didn't work. Beautiful. Well, I'm just looking at this right now. I didn't even have to debug it because I'm like, what was I doing here? Some little short circuit went in my brain. Obviously, I want to send the size first. That's a uint32, and then I send the whole buffer. And I, size of that didn't make any sense at all. All right, try it again. Now it's working. Nice. All right. So we are now serializing with serial, and uh, it's going to make our life a whole lot better.